If you are a .NET developer, sooner or later you will have to do some PDF reporting. My tried and true method is HTML to PDF conversion because it's simple to implement, it's very flexible, and you can implement stylized reports with ease. Now when it comes to which library you can use for the HTML to PDF conversion, that's where it becomes a bit more complicated because most of the good libraries require a commercial license. So in this video I'm going to show you a completely free option. I'm going to start from a mostly empty .NET 9 solution and the one service I want to highlight is the invoice factory which I'm going to use to generate a dummy invoice that we want to turn into a PDF document. The invoice contains the invoice number, when it was issued, when it's due, the seller's address, the customer's address and then some random line items which I'm going to generate based on the number of line items parameter which by default is going to be 10. So I'm going to split this video into two parts the first one is going to be generating the actual HTML template and then we're going to talk about converting this template into a PDF document. For the templating part I'm going to use a library called handlebars.net which allows you to easily define a string template you can also save it inside of a file and then you can pass in some data to this template to compile it and you're going to get back a dynamically rendered version. It supports most of the things that we can already do inside of Razor components except you don't need to depend on ASP.NET Core you just need to use this library. So let's go ahead and install it and I'm going to show you how we can use it. From our solution I'm going to look for my NuGet packages, add in handlebars.net and let's go ahead and install the latest version. I'm going to close this down and then I'm going to drop in a get endpoint which I will be using to return my HTML template to start. After we complete this part, then we're going to talk about converting the template into a PDF document. So for the template, I'm going to define it inside of a file. So let's say I call this folder views and inside of it I'm going to add a new item which I'm going to call simple template HBS. Now this is a shortcut for a handlebar file and you can add some intelligence for this file using extensions but in Visual Studio it's just going to render as a text file. Now I'm not going to write the contents of this file from scratch, I'm just going to drop in the template but it's basically an HTML document, you can see the HTML tag here and we have a head element and a body. In the head we are defining the title of this document, I'm using the name of my template which is just a simple invoice and then in the body we can define the elements. The values that I'm passing in in double curly braces are parameters that I can pass into my template and I can use these to generate my template dynamically. I can also use helper functions for let's say formatting a date or formatting some currency and then I can pass in any number of arguments to this function. I can also iterate over collections by writing each and then specifying my collection and then within the scope of my for each loop I can access the objects inside with their property names. So this should allow me to render a very simple template so let me show you how we can do this. I'm going to first configure a couple of helper functions that you saw earlier in the template and you can define them by calling handlebars we're referencing the class and then there's a static method on it called register helper and we can pass in the name of our function and what we want it to do in this case i have a helper for formatting a date for formatting my currency, my numbers, and for some multiplication if I need to do this within the template. We're going to use some of these now, like the format currency or format date, and the other ones later when I introduce a more complicated template. So then how do we actually render this template? First, let's generate an invoice by saying invoice factory and create. By default, we're going to get a dummy invoice with 10 line items. Then I'm going to read the contents of my template by constructing the template path, and then reading the text content of my file. Then we need to create our actual template by compiling it using handlebars. So I'll access the class, call compile, and pass in my template text. Then let's say we want to pass in some data to this template. I'm going to create an anonymous object. If I need to calculate any properties dynamically, I can do so when creating this object. And finally, I can call my template as a function and I can pass in my data. And what we are going to get back is going to be our HTML content 
that I want to return from this minimal API endpoint. So let's say return results.ok and get back the HTML content. So let's start this up and we're going to be greeted with the Swagger UI where I can test this out and you can see that we are getting back some HTML in the response content. If I go ahead and copy the contents of my response and I paste them into some HTML previewer, you can see what we get inside. The characters here are tabs and spaces from our template. This won't be visible in our final PDF document, but what's important is that our template is dynamically generated and you can see we have the 10 line items here and the order total. Now, how do we actually turn this HTML into a PDF document? Well, typically I would use Iron PDF, which is a paid library, so I won't be showing it in this video. Instead, I'm going to show you a library called Puppeteer Sharp, which allows you to run a headless Chrome instance from your .NET applications. There's another library that I'm going to highlight. It's called Playwright and it's developed by Microsoft and you can use it to achieve basically the same thing it's just a different package. The APIs between both of them are very similar, so I'm going to stick to Puppeteer as part of this demo. So what do we have to do once we obtain our HTML document? The first thing is obtaining a browser fetcher instance. So let's initialize a new object, and then I'm going to say browser fetcher download async, and this is going to make sure that we have the available browser. And then to launch the actual browser, we can say Puppeteer launch async, and we can pass in the browser option. Now, what you want to do here is say headless and specify true to run your browser in headless mode. Now, in most cases, this is going to be a Chrome-based browser. Once we have our browser, we can use it to initialize a page. So I'm going to say browser new page async, and then I want to say await page set content async and finally here we can pass in our html content if you're loading some dynamic fonts or something like that you can wait until it's available on the document object and finally you can get back your pdf document by saying await page and there are a couple of methods you can call pdf async pdf stream async or PDF data async. I'm going to call the data async method and this gives me back an array of bytes representing my PDF document. I can also pass in some options using the PDF options type and I'm going to use the format of A4. I'm going to print the background and I'm specifying some margin options. So finally, once we have our PDF data, we can return our document using results file, specify the array of bytes, application PDF as my response type, and then I can give my PDF document a unique name. So let's go ahead and start this version of our application. And if I go ahead and send a test request, we're going to land on this breakpoint, generate an invoice, and then I'm going to walk through these steps a bit more slowly. So here is our initial template. It contains what we want to render with some dynamic data. We're using handlebars to compile this into an object and then invoke it to obtain our HTML document. And you can see some initial info and the line items rendered properly. And then we're going to use Puppeteer Sharp to download the browser, launch the browser window, create a new page, set the page content, and finally render the page content as a PDF document that we can return from our API. So back in Swagger, I have an option to download a file. And if I open this file, this is what we're going to see, a very basic PDF report that contains some dynamic rendered data. So our proof of concept is working, now how can we improve it? I'm going to introduce a more complex template inside of the invoice report file that also contains some style information using CSS. This example is a bit more complex, so I'm not going to walk through each of the individual details. You can see there's a lot of things going on inside, and the template itself is significantly more complex. One thing I want to highlight is how you can pass in an image as a base64 encoded string and have it rendered inside of the template. You're going to see what this looks like when we actually generate the PDF report. And then most of the remainder of the template is very straightforward, just rendering some dynamic data using the handlebar syntax. So how do we use it? Well, we have to update the report that we are fetching here. It's going to be the invoice report. Next, I have to fetch my logo which I have here as a PNG file, and I'm going to fetch it here by specifying the path, reading all of the bytes for this file, and then converting the bytes into a base64 string. Then I can pass this as another property, logo base64, and I'm going to drop in the value. And I'm also going to have a subtotal here, 
which I'm going to copy as the same value as the total. Optionally, you can apply tax and anything else you might need for your invoice or the specific PDF report that you're generating. Now, these are the only changes that I'm going to make. And then let's rerun the application with our more complex report. So let's send another request get back the file and I'm going to download it. And when we open this file, you can see it's a lot more interesting. It contains some stylized components with CSS. It's also rendering my image properly as a base64 encoded string. And you can see our line items rendered in a table. In the end, we also have our subtotal, any tags and the order total. Of course, we can continue updating this. Now I want to show you one more example and that's how to add the header and footer. This is something that I see a lot of developers complaining about. And it's actually very simple. Most of these libraries support specifying a header and footer template. Let's say I specify something like this. In my header, I want to have a div with some spans inside. And Puppeteer Sharp specifically allows you to inject values into the header or footer by specifying a class with the value that you want to dynamically render. So in this case, I want to specify the document title and the date. And in the footer, I want to have the date the current page and the total number of pages. Now to make this more interesting, let's update the invoice factory to generate, let's say, 100 line items, why not? And let's restart the application. And again, I'm going to send a request. We'll get back our document, which I'm going to download. And when I open this document, you can see that we have our header information here, the document title and the date when it was created. Now in this case, my table has broken into the second page, but you can also see my footer showing up here. So so this was page one of five. Then we have our table, which is broken into a couple of pages. The table header is repeated on every page and the footer keeps updating based on the current page that we are looking at. So in the end, we have page five of five. And this is how you can introduce the header and footer using Puppeteer Sharp. If you wanted to do something like this using Playwright, it's going to look very similar as the API surface is mostly the same and these libraries rely on running Chrome in headless mode. If you want to grab the source code for this video, including all of the templates, then go ahead and check out the pinned comment right below. And if you want to see how you can do PDF reporting with Razor Syntax support that has IntelliSense in .NET, then go ahead and check out this video next. Take a look at my courses if you want to improve your software architecture skills. And until next time, stay awesome.